Thanks for joining us here on a Monday. I'm Arlen Bowling with you as we get ready to kick off our ag trade for the week. And uh, here to talk about it, we have Rich Nelson on the line. He's with Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. Uh, boy, big band of showers. Tim Ross was just talking about rainfall all the way from southwest Nebraska through the central part of the state and then up through Chicago and along the Great Lakes area there. So we're in that area there where they haven't finished planting. That's going to keep them out of the field for a couple of days. Soon the right. I think uh, that, as long as this current forecast, these next few days uh, also should imply a lot of guys, maybe uh, certainly in the northern and, and northwest uh, portion of the Corn Belt, might be uh, stuck out of field here. And that might be discussion here for today's uh, crop progress numbers later on today, which might get uh, a lot of billing here with, uh, with the trade's attention to them. On the flip side of the coin, I've talked with a number of people now uh, from the western Corn Belt through the central Corn Belt, and they say that uh, in a lot of cases the planters are already put back in the shed for the year. They're all done with corn and soybeans already, so any rain they receive now would be just terrific. Certainly right. I think that's actually a really interesting point. We're going to have the same type of a relatively similar setup to last year where we had uh, eastern Corn Belt and, and southern and central regions of the western Corn Belt do fine here. And, and uh, you know, so maybe this uh, issue might be repeated and we, again where these uh, northwest areas are maybe a little problematic regarding uh, uh, yield here. But so, certainly uh, too early to say here just yet for the year. Of course, last week, USDA said that uh, on their Monday update, uh, based on a survey from the day before uh, a week ago Sunday, we had national corn planting progress at 39% complete. What do you think it might be here this week? You know, usually the, for this particular week, uh, we average about a 19% increase. So uh, in terms of this one, I don't think we'll be uh, be pushing 20% gains in, in terms of this trade. So we might be just at this maybe 57, maybe 58% done uh, mark on the uh, on the corn end is what we're saying. How about soybeans? And soybean side here, this week we normally add uh, about 13% uh, during last week's uh, trading here, so uh, last week's planning effort, I should say. So in terms of this one, we probably will see this push up from last week's 15 to maybe around this, uh, in fact, uh, maybe around this 28% uh, percent complete mark at the, uh, at the optimistic tone here. Okay, now on the wheat market, we've had a lot of weakness creeping in there again, and I was looking at some charts this morning, I believe it was on July Chicago wheat, where all the volume is. And I believe it's been on an uptrend line from uh, way back in, if I, if I recall, I think it was early December. And even though we've had a downward sell-off, and it's been a steep decline here recently, it, it still remained intact, I believe, that uptrend line. So it hasn't violated that yet. And that seems to be giving a little bit of hope to some of the market bulls out there. Exactly right. We have taken off a good 50, 60 cents off these uh, off the July KC wheat contract, and, and certainly uh, uh, numbers uh, relatively close to that on the uh, on the Chicago contract as well. Uh, like you mentioned, we are still holding the general uptrend line right now, so that's still positive. Uh, of course, I think the trade is maybe suggesting that USD's numbers last week might have kind of quashed some bullish hopes here regarding the uh, the trade discussion on winter wheat production here. Well, the question right now is, with that sell-off that we have seen, there's a term in the trade they, they uh, tend to say, have they flushed it out yet? Do you think there's more flushing to do or not? In the very short term, I actually do think there's just a little bit more to go here uh, in terms of the trade mindset. I think we've taken the uh, the bite off the exciting, uh, scary discussion uh, part of the uh, of the hard red winter harvest and, and and whatnot here as far as the upcoming numbers. But let's also keep in mind we got planting for corn, soybeans, which is still trying to be a struggling issue. Uh, however, we will get some done these next few weeks, and therefore wheat might have a little pressure. But uh, gosh darn, we all know that wheat has a contra-seasonal rally after harvest, so this might be something which a lot of uh, traders look at here in a few weeks up ahead. Overnight, we had the corn about a penny weaker, we had the soybeans about four higher, and then we had the wheat market down uh, roughly about a nickel in uh, Chicago. So we'll see how things open up here in our next uh, half hour, that's for sure. Rich, we'll pause for a break, and we will come back and we'll talk about our livestock trade. That was an interesting close on Friday. We'll find out why when we come back. Let's go back to our conversation, and we are talking with Rich Nelson of Allendale Incorporated in McHenry, Illinois. I want to get his thoughts on the livestock trade here today. And looking back at our close from last week, we had the cattle market chopping around, and it closed just narrowly mixed. We had the live cattle slightly higher. We had the feeder cattle slightly weaker, just maybe 20 cents or so, uh, real indecisive close. And then uh, you had the lean hog just completely rolling over in that June contract last Friday, over $2 weaker on 
the day. Let's talk first of all about this cattle market. Seems like the uh, cash cattle market has kind of run out of enthusiasm here. I think that's, right. that's the best way of putting that here. Uh, last couple of weeks, we have seen some uh, much higher than wanted uh, kill numbers here. We do have this seasonal rise in numbers, which happens as we go into summer. In addition, we've had maybe a small bounce up in extra numbers coming from that uh, heavy fall placement. So last week's kill, 645,000 head just under the previous week's very high number, also 647,000 heads. So big numbers showing up now as it stands. They're not burdensome, but certainly maybe a little larger than people want to see here. Wanted to take a look back at the livestock summary from uh, Friday afternoon, according to USDA, and uh, on the report off of the wire. We actually had uh, live sales, they say, in a range of 118 to about 122 on a live basis. And the way they break it out, uh, they showed Kansas selling about 2,000 head, and uh, they covered that entire range, 118 to 122. Uh, they also had Texas checking in with about 600 head. Now, they were all at the upper end of the range at uh, 122. Colorado also had about 400 head that sold at 122. On a dress basis, uh, we show Nebraska about 3,000 heads sold anywhere from 191 to 195 per hundred weight. And then in Iowa, we had almost 7,500 head that sold, but a wide, wide range, anywhere from 188 on the lower end to 195 on the top end on a dress basis. So you shake it all together, and it, it looks like, I guess you would call it steady to maybe a little weaker than what we had the week before. Is this uh, something you expect to see more of this week or what? Yeah, I, I do think so here. I, I think the main issue for us right now on the cattle side is we are seeing those extra numbers start to show up in addition to the seasonal rise in, in, in slaughter. So this is something which I think the bears uh, can't quite ignore or, or, or probably are, are correct on with their viewpoint. One thing we can point out, though, is on the future side with such a steep discount on these summer contracts, I'm not sure if June or August cattle uh, futures will be uh, breaking much at all as we uh, have this next wave of slightly lower cash cattle trade simply due to this heavy discount they already have. Interesting too where we had the sharply lower lean hog trade but I was looking on the uh, cash hog markets Friday afternoon everything was higher and if you look at the uh, pork carcass cutout values and also on the uh, belly market update from Friday afternoon they were all higher uh, about the only thing weaker would have been uh, maybe the ham market down about 13 cents or so but otherwise that was pretty positive and that was an interesting divergence right there. Very good point. Uh, so cash hogs rose uh, over $3 last week, so beating the previous two weeks. Cash pork, which you just mentioned there, up $4 last week, $4.18 here, in fact. So uh, a big gain. In fact, uh, the best cash pork gain we've seen here in, I want to say, at least uh, two to three months. So big numbers there, starting to see these, uh, this demand and tighter supply kind of play together right now. Okay, well, we'll uh, keep an eye on that, and I uh, appreciate all the uh, input on the markets here today. Again, I'll remind everybody, later on this afternoon, we'll be getting our crop progress and condition report from USDA. It'll be the weekly update, and it will come out at 4 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central. Rich, thank you so much. We'll talk with you again soon. Rich Nelson of Allendale. We're about ready to get rocking and rolling here, Janet.